Hey, what's up, y'all? What's poppin'? It's D-Boss React to this Miss Mojo video. This is top 10 cringiest moments from RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, I've done a couple RuPaul's Drag Race videos. I've watched one season, not even an entire season, actually, but I watched um, a few episodes of a season, like, a few years ago. Um, they seem to have a lot going on with this show. <laughs> a lot of shade being thrown, a lot of queens on the show, for sure. So, let's see uh, these cringy moments, though. Let's watch. Sadly, not every walk down the runway is equal. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 cringiest moments from RuPaul's Drag Race. Charlie, come on! Come on, Charlie. Do something, Charlie. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the most awkward things to ever happen on RuPaul's Drag Race or RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, but we won't be including any from Untucked. I went to Valencia, where they filmed the TV show Weeds. Now, y'all, it's very dry. It's almost kind of like your vagina. Can I get an amen? You said that to these old ladies? Bitch. Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's most famous tragedies, so it's pretty oh. fitting that Macbeth is also considered to be one of drag races. First day of school, House of Capras is gonna roll. Get me lit. This reinterpretation of the Scottish play was performed by Kennedy Davenport's team in the season seven episode, Shakespeare. The spirit. The spirits have spoken. We saw it in a dream. Lady McBitch is the neat cheer supreme. While Max managed to pull her team through their performance of Romeo and Juliet, Kennedy's team never seemed to get theirs off the ground at all. There was line fumbling, wooden acting, multiple miscues, and Pearl seemingly struggling to not bump into the scenery. This person screwed up, and then this person screwed up, and then this person doesn't know what to do. A stunned Michelle and RuPaul could barely contain their horror. During rehearsals, Ru even described it as Drag Race's worst car crash in seven Ooh. seasons. I don't know what to tell you, ladies. This is not good. Everybody on my team is in deep right now. I did not know Number she was nine, from uh, Chanel Michelle. eliminates herself. Talk about digging yourself a hole. One of the staple questions contestants on Drag Race are expected to answer is, which of your fellow contestants deserve to go home? Who should be eliminated tonight? Rebecca, what's your answer? Do we just get to pick one? This drama-stirring tradition began all the way back in season one. But to this day, no one has given quite such a shocking answer as Chanel. Chanel, who should be eliminated tonight? I'm so glad you asked me this question. I nominate myself because I don't want to be here anymore. By the sixth week in the competition, Chanel felt frustrated that her skill and beauty wasn't being rewarded enough by positive critiques or challenge wins. Mm. So when asked, she nominated herself to go home. I'm a beautiful person internally and on the outside. And it's so, so frustrating to me that that image does not seem to be conveyed. Chanel's diva moment became super awkward when she actually ended up in the bottom two alongside Rebecca Glasscock and was then eliminated. Thank you all. Chanel, even though your time here has come to an end, your contribution to the world of drag is undeniable. Oh, that crazy. Number eight, Coco she was over it. Reese's talent show dance routine. The stakes could not have been higher when the highly anticipated first episode like of All Stars 2 dropped. The first category was All Star Talent Show Extravaganza, oh, with all 10 returning queens expected to wow a live audience, the judges, and their fellow All Stars in a variety show style performance. I think that was the brief was to bring your best talent to the main stage. So when Coco Montrese, who was not known for her dance skills on the show, revealed hers was going to be a dance routine, painted eyebrows were raised. We all make choices. That was a choice. <laughs> Coco admitted she knew it was a risky choice. Embarrassingly, that risk didn't pay off. Though she looked the part, her vintage Hollywood number fell flat. <laughs> number seven, I'll Alaska's Meltdown. The higher you get, the further you fall. In All Stars 2, former season five contestant Alaska slayed the competition every week until the semi-final came along. Because this is All Stars, I think this was a bit lazy tonight and I expect more. The challenge for the episode was for each queen to give a female member of their family a drag makeover and then vogue the house down on the runway. 
Though confident she'd pull off another win, the judges critiqued Alaska for not putting enough effort into Mother Hawaii's look. After finding herself at the bottom for the first time, Alaska threw what can be described as a tantrum, even desperately offering a $10,000 bribe to top two contestant detox to save her. Not a cute <laughs> look. Well, I'll give you $10,000 if you let me stay. Before taxes, You're I'll transfer it to you via PayPal because I need to stay in this competition. I need to be in the final four. Number six, Roxy Andrews roast hosting. Despite floundering a lot in All Stars 2, we have to give Roxy Andrews props for her perseverance. I suck more than Michelle Visage at a truck stop with a, with a, with a glory hole, right? With a, with a, with a. For comedy chops though, those we can't excuse. I'm, I'm not the funniest. <laughs> Why you be? You killed that one, sis! For Revenge of the Queens, the contestants were asked to pair up and perform stand-up comedy in front of the judges and oh, a live audience to. filled with the bitter faces of Drag Race past. Oh my god, Coquita! There you are! <laughs> How's everything out here on the strip tonight? Left without a partner, Roxy was given the job of hosting, a job that unfortunately proved too difficult for her. After tripping over her opening jokes, she decided to resurrect her Tasha Salad character from season 5. It was funny for about a minute. Then all we got were embarrassingly cheesy salad puns. They are so nutty. Besides walnuts, walnuts and almonds, these are my favorite nuts, ladies and gentlemen. Number 5. Do I have something on my face? There are two cardinal rules to follow when interacting with Mama Roo on Drag Race. One, always make her laugh during Snatch Game. And two, never talk back to her. No, you have a, a very big personality. Pro, you do not have a very big personality. How are you gonna overcome that for this award? In the fifth episode of season seven, Rue dropped by to give Pearl and Max some advice That's while they great. prepared jokes for the Despy Awards challenge. Um, uh, I think that I have a great personality, actually. After Rue gave Pearl a note about working on her personality, Pearl took offense to the implication that she didn't have one. Well, I'm hoping it will light a fire under your ass. Rue attempted to clarify that her criticism was meant as encouragement, but Pearl argued that it had the opposite effect, leading to this excruciating standoff between the two. There's something on my face. Oh? No, I'm just not convinced. I'm just not convinced. And I want you to do well. That's why I brought your ass here. Number four, Mimi on <laughs> first I'm lifts up me. India Farah. Okay, fine. There's a third cardinal rule to follow on Drag Race. It's yes, one that she. you think would go without saying, though. Drag is not a contact sport. The shocking moment that led up to the infamous quote from Rue happened in season three. After the workout video challenge in Totally Leotarded, India Farah and Mimi on first landed in the bottom two. India for her lack of energy, and Mimi for the exact opposite. But in the challenge, your slapstick got sloppy. In the lip sync for your life, Mimi desperately gave it her all to stay in the race. After trying to block India from view, she made the inexplicable choice to throw her competitor over her shoulder. India was not pleased, and neither was anyone else. What the hell is she thinking? You can't be lifting up drag queens. I was honestly scared, and all I could do was scream. Get out of me! Number three, Fifi O'Hara oh, and Coco Montrese's comedy routine. Roxy Andrews wasn't the only one whose comedy routine failed to impress. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, ugh. Fifi O'Hara and Coco Montrese were partnered up for the stand-up comedy challenge in Revenge of the Queens. But I have a little favor to ask of you. What you want, girl? Think you could do my makeup? Rather than stick to a conventional stand-up format, the pair chose to do more of a Saturday Night Live-esque character study, which Katya hilariously described as an off, 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 off Broadway theater production of Hookers at the Point. Though Coco's self-deprecating joke about using cheesy chips to do Fifi's makeup was worthy of a chuckle, the whole skit felt out of place and was very uncomfortable to watch. Mm. Jump in a car and jump out. <laughs> the cops are come and put their hands on the oh, hood. But... To top it all, Fifi also failed to leave the show gracefully by rejecting Alyssa's consolation hug. That's okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh. Love you. Number two, Ooh. Valentina refuses to remove her mask. Valentina's exit from season 9 of Drag Race might just be the most controversial elimination in the show's history so far. After impressing the judges week after week, Valentina's place as a frontrunner in the competition seemed assured. On the runway, you gave us Spanish fly, but your pilot didn't land. That perfect track record was broken in episode 9 when she wound up in the bottom two with Nina Bonina Brown. 
Fans were left gagging when Rue interrupted the lip sync for your life to ask that Valentina remove her outfit's mask, and then horrified when Valentina refused. Valentina, this is the lip sync for your life. We need to see your lips. Take that thing off of your mouth. I'd like to keep it on, please. Rue was not impressed, mm. especially when it became clear Valentina also had not learned the lyrics properly. It was a brutally embarrassing ending to Valentina's time on the show. Oh, she doesn't know the words. Before we unveil our top mm, pick, here are some honorable room. mentions. Now, if it weren't for a last minute decision at the abortion clinic, the world wouldn't have known Cher. Uh, are you pro-life? Has your stance changed at all throughout your lifetime? Ooh, Do I get up now? <laughs> I'm confused. Government's confused. We're all confused. Am I leaving? <laughs> Number one, Alexis Michelle and Pheromone's Michelle Visage Roast. In season nine, the remaining eight queens were tasked with a daunting challenge to oh, roast shit, the most sorry. judgmental of all drag race judges, Michelle Visage. While some queens struck comedy gold, two routines were so rocky that we just couldn't pick between them. Despite coming off as a sweetheart, Pheromone decided to go for the jugular with some insult comedy. And I'm pretty sure having one song in the 90s that no one even remembers doesn't qualify you to be a judge on such a big TV show. <laughs> Good thing she's been sucking RuPaul's dick for so long. Unfortunately, she forgot about the comedy part, and the audience forgot how to laugh. Expectations were higher for Alexis Michelle, whose visual gag concerning Michelle Visage's least favorite color green immediately flopped. In honor of your big night, I wore your favorite color, girl. <laughs> um, Between that and the offensive slurs, it was nothing but crickets from the audience. Fortune. You also know about playing second fiddle. You've been playing Bull Dyke to Chelsea Handler's Alcoholic Wasp for ages now. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, oh. she and Thera ended up lip syncing. I have to congratulate you on really being able to take the piss. Just ask the UK men's water polo team. Do you agree with our picks? Yeah, and I need to stop. I need to leave the jokes to the professionals. Just no. I need to remove that comedy segment from RuPaul's Drag Race completely, in my opinion, because, yeah, it does make it awkward. And most people aren't just naturally funny. So even if they have a routine that they prepare, you know, beforehand, it's probably not going to come across funny. You know, when they deliver, it's going to come across awkward and corny. So... Why? <laughs> but I mean, I guess this is something they regularly do on the show. Uh, it's just kind of cringy. Uh, but these are definitely some weird moments, except the moment that they had with uh, Chanel. Her um, saying that she doesn't want to be on the show anymore, I don't see how that's cringy. She just didn't want to be there. She didn't feel like she was being appreciated, so she had to go. You know, I get it. Um, but anyway, this is a cool list. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what other videos you want me to react to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!